Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Ricardo. This is my fake microphone. I'm a Formula One driver, and this is The Breakdown. This is Days of Thunder. As a child, this is probably my most watched film. Yeah, Tom Cruise, Ozzy, Nicole Kidman. You're kidding. I, I loved all the car scenes, obviously. Um, there was like a bit of romance as well, which as a young kid, you know, it's, it's always... <laughs> He's moving very aggressively. Stop playing peekable and around his rear view mirror. I thought you boys would have had enough of that by now. <laughs> I'm not doing anything like that, Harry. Pause it here. So yeah, like we do talk to our, like we call it race engineer, but it's like that level of conversation is, is a, <laughs> it's a little theatrical, uh, but we will like, we will go back and forth a bit, but it's more like a few words at a time. They're conversating. You definitely like push the boundaries sometimes. And if you're going kind of back and forth with a driver through the race, and if he, if you feel he's, kind of push the limits with you and, and been a bit dirty, then if you get a chance to like, like repay the favor, you might squeeze him and yeah, there's like little subtle ways you can do it, which the drivers know exactly what's going on. It doesn't happen to that extent, at least in, in F1. I'll, I'll push the limit, but I'll never put another driver in danger because I think that's just that respect that you have for one another. If bumper gets any looser around, they're gonna black flag you. Let them go by. Stop right there. So black flag is basically you've done something dirty, illegal, something like really wrong, and a black flag is a signal that you have to come in the pits and your race is over. Um, so they're basically disqualifying you from the race if you get a black flag. It hasn't happened in any race I don't think I've been in. Um, normally, like, and at this level, you'd expect the drivers to, it's a bit more like uneducated, you know, like, but by the time you make it professional, you shouldn't be doing stuff that's giving you a black flag. So, I mean, shame on Rowdy Burns, right? Shame on him. He's waving me by, but it take him on a high side. Great music. Yeah, I mean, Tom falls for it. Rewind, please. I've seen in NASCAR, it, it happens a bit, so a lot of the time the driver will signal, if he's got someone right up his bumper, he might signal, like, I'm coming in the pits. And it just, I guess, avoids the risk, because he has to start slowing down at some point, And it gives, the, I guess, the driver behind an opportunity to to move out before he starts slowing down so he doesn't probably run in the back and, and have a crash. So I guess that's a bit of like a safety slash courtesy thing for both of them. Um, but in F1, no, we're so, we can't, like you wouldn't be able to see the other guy's hands in the car, just the way that the, the, the cars are designed and, and built. I mean, I've given guys the finger before, whether they've seen it, they normally see it after the fact uh, on, on TV. Um, I enjoy that, it, it gives me a rush. He's got more horsepower than everyone else. <laughs> the way he's able to obviously like pass the back markers effortlessly. So back markers, just the guys more towards the back. Like they've all got, they should all have very similar cars as far as horsepower goes and power output. So how he's able to like come through so easily, that's very dramatized. There's a crash coming out of turn four, Cole. leave a mark. Normally, especially in NASCAR, they have spotters. So if there's an accident, they'll say, um, okay, stay stay high, uh, car low. So they'll give them a bit of guidance through, through an incident to try and basically get them to avoid it. They're like another pair of eyes for them. And uh, so there was no information there. And then also Cole, very, very brave, actually went on the throttle. So <laughs> he accelerated through the danger, which I think uh, is something you normally wouldn't do, <laughs> but because he is the hero in this story, it was a very heroic thing from uh, Cole Trickle. So it kind of spun very quickly and my immediate thought was he's, like there was oil from the accident and the oil caused him to spin like that. But why cars like lose control? It's at the end of the day, you've got a lot of horsepower in a race car and only a certain amount of grip coming from the tire um, and at some point, you get a breaking point where the grip, the power exceeds the grip, for example. That's where, like, as a race car driver, that's what makes, I guess, a good one, is you, you kind of find that limit of pushing the tire and, and, and the level of grip you have 
to the point where you're nearly spinning, but you're, you're in control. Like the, the crash scene was very good as far as like the, the car rolling and the, you could hear kind of each impact when it rolled and flipped and then hit, hit the tarmac again. I mean, he rolled like it was kind of, it was pretty spectacular, but I don't think they overkilled it as well. So I think they did quite well with that. Is the race done? <laughs> I mean, it's done for Cole. I'm only laughing because I know Cole pulls through and he makes sweet love to Nicole Kidman in the hospital. Up next, we got Baby Driver. <laughs> Stop right there. When he reverses, like having like having some accelerator when he like drops the clutch, like keeping your revs high, so you're having some throttle when he drops the clutch, that will give him a bit of like wheel spin and enable him to probably reverse a little bit quicker without stalling. So he's playing it safe. I wish I could listen to music when I race because I reckon I'll go faster, but I got my engineer droning me out the whole time. So drifting, so you can see like what helps a drift, I guess in, in his case now, like so if you rip the handbrake up, that works on the rear wheels. We call it in racing, we call it oversteer, turning too much that you're like catching the rear of the car. Uh, and so what the handbrake can do, and as, as they showed, it locks the rear. So if you turn and rip the handbrake and it kind of keeps the front pivoted and just brings the rear around, so it brings the rear out and then it kind of, you can already get it to that point. So then if you drop the handbrake, you're kind of already in the slide and then you can just manage it with like your throttle. It's, it's actually quite hard to explain, but um, if you can do that, like you're, you're good. Like you've got a good feeling of the car and it's like, I guess it's like on a motorbike, someone who does like a wheelie, a wheel stand, they get that balance point and, and they can feel it and just, and, and hold that. And it's a little bit like a slide in a car. Um, you kind of hit a little bit of a balance point and you can just play with it a little bit of steering and throttle. But you can get in like tighter spaces better if you're good. Um, so like dodging traffic in his case, drifting's not a bad thing. Jump ahead please. Tight turn, cut in front of the uh, truck there, or whatever. Handbrake, so a little bit of a slide cut in. So it just like enabled him to like cut the angle by just quickly sliding the rear out, pivoting in. Um, and the cop couldn't react quick enough. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not gonna lie to my audience here. I've never done that, <laughs> but that was pretty cool. Quick uh, like jerk or yank of the steering wheel, handbrake, and that's given him like a real quick slide. But then to control that, he's done pretty good. I'll just, I'll give him that. I've never done it. That. So that's like a, what we call a hairpin, so like a 180. If he like drove that normally, he wouldn't have been able to create or turn the car on such an acute angle. What was quite cool there is because he had so much forward momentum when he's like ripped the handbrake, he's accelerating, but the momentum's still pushing him backwards. And then the tires find enough grip and traction and then drive him forward. That kind of sequence of still like rolling backwards and then slingshotting forward, that's, that's pretty cool. Can we fast forward a bit? Does he have a does he have a flat tire? Not very real. Um, Ansel's done a lot of cool shit up until now, but that that's not happening. Good soundtrack though. It's a good movie. It's they, he's got he's got some good drift tires on. I doubt that Subaru is running stocks. If it did, <laughs> they would be gone, um, or he would be having like big flat spots. So because he's ripped the handbrake so many times, like the rears are locked and they're sliding, so you're shaving rubber off one certain patch of the tire. The car would be like duh, 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 duh. That's very cool. Like the flying V. Mighty ducks. If I'm driving people, female or friends, I don't really because when you drive fast actually it's, it can be quite uncomfortable. Like if you're cornering, like you see in the in the back seat actually, um, John and Isa. Is it John? That's his name, right? Yeah. Um, John and Isa, they're like you know, getting thrown around. So it's always more comfortable for the driver because you know what move you're going to make and you've got the steering wheel kind of to hold you as well. Unless the person is prepared for you to drive fast, it's normally not that comfortable because they're like getting thrown around. So I actually just focus on, first thing is make sure there's a good soundtrack, good music, and then just be smooth. 
be smooth and make it just a beautiful ride, get to your destination, and then uh, then you can let loose on foot in the club. In the club. Up next, the Fast and the Furious. As kids, like we would, me and my friends would like take the piss out of this. Like we loved it. It's it's so exaggerated, but it's so great. I, I love it. Go! See, for me, that was like, that was unnecessary because it, it didn't really make sense because he's at such a low speed already and it kind of like the car like swerves and it for me, it like actually emphasized he was going quite slow. Like it looked, it didn't really look good. That was weird, but also, yeah, they take off like one, two, three, four, you know what I mean? So their reaction time was terrible. Vin Diesel there, he's, he, he had it. The others were nowhere. How about we freeze this frame? The, the computer, the laptop. So there's so many sensors on, on, on a race car. Well, all that data you're getting will tell you, you know, engine temperatures, how this is, how that is. It can be used for reliability, for the, the engineers to just check that everything's fine and if we got a problem for them to then quickly address it, if it can be addressed. Like, I'm not kidding you, on an F1 car there's, I'm actually guessing, but I want to say there's like a thousand sensors. Like, it's insane. <laughs> NOS, so we do not have NOS. Um, I didn't know NOS existed until I saw this beautiful movie. And then naturally, everyone wanted NOS. <laughs> it was like, I didn't have my license then, but it was like, how can we get a bottle of NOS in our car? Monica! <laughs> That deceleration, you feel it all on your neck. And actually, Paul showed it quite bravely when he pushed the NOS, neck went back. He needs to do neck training. Um, before this film, he should have had some absolute neck training. But yeah, as a, as a race car driver, um, so like with F1, a lot of us, a lot of people talk about our neck, like we got thick necks and um, G-forces. G so a lot of the force, so when you break, you get a lot of like, I guess, negative Gs. So everything's throwing you forward. So you need to support all that. Um, all that force and hold your neck up basically. So we do a lot of neck training to support that. Um, otherwise it's like just massive whiplash. My heart rate is peaking right now. I just, firstly, I feel sorry for Ja Rule. Like, Monica. <laughs> it's so good. Winning's winning. Rhodes close, pizza boy, find another way home. It's so good. Up next, Talladega Nights. Oh, All right, you're not on fire! I knew it, you're lying! Relax. I burned! I'm there is fire. no fire! I'm on fire! Right, come back here! <laughs> All right, so where they did it wrong, all our race gear is fireproof. Um, like Nomex material, I think that's that's what it's called, but it's it's a fireproof material. I haven't been in this situation, and I don't ever wish to be. Um, but I think you can like still be on fire, but it doesn't show like the flame immediately. So like it can kind of, you could still be burning some somehow. So like the marshals should have extinguished him regardless. Um, so shame on them for letting my dear Ricky Bobby Burn. Whether he was or not is let's that's besides the point. Ah! Help me, Tom Cruise. Also, they should have contained him. They, he's had like head trauma from that accident. They should have let him run around like that. There's marshals around like all all the track. Um, so I guess they'll they'll go they'll like as soon as they could because they'll be on like some points of the track so they could get like the quickest access and then there'll be um, docs as well. As soon as like so if, if docs saw it, it was like it looked bad they'll they'll go straight away. Um, and uh, and the track the track would be like there'll be yellow flags which mean like slow down so they would they would probably take the risk of just going on track as soon as they could even if the other cars are still on we would all slow down if we saw a big accident so we wouldn't put the marshals in risk but yeah they'll go and if there is a fire get the extinguishers on it straight away um, and try and make contact with the driver try to get like a thumbs up or something that a they're conscious and b they're more or less okay but how did he get down to his underwear that fast <laughs> Still in his boots on. I love these underpants. I want to say they were probably from like the Second World War. They looked pretty prehistoric. So race cars have what we call five point harness. So you have like crutch, crutch belts, um, which like come through your crutch and then like they come around to your waist and all that. And 
his underpants were baggy. When you get the crutch ones done up tight, you want everything to be kind of streamlined. I'm not convinced those underpants he's wearing is going to keep things streamlined. So he's he's at risk of getting a nut caught in a belt. But he's got bigger issues right now. He's on fire. Help me, Oprah Winifrey! Up next is Driven. I saw this uh, when it was at the cinemas, and I'm going very personal here. I was very uncomfortable for the last probably half hour of the movie because I didn't want to leave my seat. But I, for whatever reason, I think I drank too much frozen coke or something. I had to pee so, so, so bad. Like, I was on the verge of pissing my pants during this movie. So the last half hour might be a blur. Oh, Brandenburg is right there, ready to get past him. I don't really get why they, like the shift and the accelerator, like getting on the throttle, like I get that people, you know, like viewers will watch that and be like, oh yeah, he's accelerating, like he's trying to go fast. I don't actually know what they had back then, because at, at one point in time, for sure, they had three pedals, so accelerator, brake, and clutch, and they had like stick shift. But for a while now, we've had, so like we've, we lost the clutch pedal, so we've just got two pedals, accelerator, brake, and all the, the gears are on the steering wheel, so up and down shift, like paddle shift. Like the cars are real, like the, the cars they're showing, like one of the guys there was Chip Ganassi on the pit wall, like that's his car, the target car, like he's a proper team owner and all that. So the cars they're showing are real, but the pedals and all that, I'm not convinced. The whole like wheel thing is, I don't know what they're trying to show, like a quick, a quick maneuver. I guess at those speeds as well, like to turn the wheel that fast, like you're, you're gonna, you have a chance of spinning. Cause like with that speed and that quick, uh, that quicker movement, there's a chance that, yeah, you're gonna break the grip. is really putting pressure on blind. Don't overreach. So race engineer, a lot of the time they'll be giving uh, I guess it's feedback, some advice, uh, some instructions. So feedback might be your first sector. So a, a lap's normally broken up into like three sectors. So you might say your first sector is great. You can improve second sector. So think about like maybe breaking, trying to push your breaking point three meters later for turn 10 um, and see, see how that goes. Breaking point, yeah. So um, basically in how we break up a, a racetrack, obviously, so say there's 20 corners, um, and uh, when you approach a corner, the first thing you do is, obviously you're accelerating, if it's a straight, but then the first thing you do, the first thing you act on normally is braking. So you pick out your braking point, so it's like a reference. And because we go so fast, you need to pick up references on the circuit to, to kind of improve your accuracy. So it might be like a little sign on the track, it might be a taller piece of grass or something on the side, but that will be your reference to kind of find your limit of braking so um, so a braking point is, is essentially that at the moment you brake for the corner and it's it's a reference which we'll pick on the on the circuit rewind please like how he's able to pass him so easily it's like oh yeah oh I forgot to go all the way on the throttle yeah I'm gonna do that now so I can pass him and again like if these guys are that competitive like if they're if they're so close to each other uh, on skill level and all that you, normally you're not going to pass a guy that effortlessly. And the first move actually where um, where he passed him, it was kind of I think on, on like a left right, uh, like kind of chicane. It was also not a realistic corner where he would pass him. Like it was, it was kind of a one line corner. I got a lot of beef with this right now. Up next, American Graffiti. I like it already. Hey Lori, what in the hell are you doing in there? Is she gonna ride with you? Mind your own business, John. Yeah, she's going with me. You take care of Let's go, yourself. let's go back. So Harrison is blinded by love. So everyone knows in a race car, weight, weight saving is crucial. Formula One cars are pretty much built out of carbon fiber, because carbon fiber is, yes, it's strong, but it's very lightweight. So like weight saving is everything. That's why we as drivers as well have to be super light. Um, because basically weight slows you down. So Harrison, you will get her after the race if you win. Your chance of winning now is tarnished because you're carrying more weight. Silly Harrison. You guys ready? <laughs> Wait, sorry. <laughs> Who is that guy? Is he supposed to be like chief nerd? What is going on?
swerved a little, went on the grass, I don't know, but you're driving on a straight. Um, you should not lose control in a straight line. In a road car, like if it's a drag car with like a thousand horsepower, maybe, that shouldn't happen, whether it's an old car or not. It shouldn't, I mean, there's skinny wheels, I'll give it that. They're very skinny tires. They're not offering much grip, but in a straight line still. It could have been his cowboy hat, it could have got it in the way of his vision. <laughs> Alright, he slid down that way. You know where the girl was sitting, passenger seat right side. She rolled the car. Idiot. Stop right there. I don't know where the fire came from in the first place, but anyway, it can happen, but it happens too much in movies. It's Hollywood. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. That's been the breakdown. It was emotional. Thanks for enjoying it with me.